Hey everyone, so if you saw my last video, you'll know that I got the 2023-2024 Arsenal home shirt, and uh, here it is right here. I'm really excited to talk about this and uh, go into detail. I suppose this is something of a review, though I'm going to kind of blabber on about random thoughts like I often do in these videos. Anyway, at the end of the day, it's a home shirt. It's an Arsenal home shirt. So what does that mean? That means it's a red shirt with white sleeves. Every Arsenal home shirt is a red shirt with white sleeves with very few exceptions throughout the club's history. I think if I'm not mistaken, there's actually a rule in English football that says that a club can't make any drastic changes to their home shirt without consulting their supporters. So changes that a kit designer makes to a home shirt can often be very well received. They can often be universally despised, or they can divide a fan base. Uh, an example of that is the Arsenal 2021-22 home shirt. Um, there were these navy stripes on them, and some people liked them. I was not one of those people. I thought they looked pretty awful. Another controversial point of that shirt was that there was this white piping all the way down the side of the shirt, and that kind of made... The Arsenal shirt look like an Ajax shirt, and newsflash, we're not Ajax, we're Arsenal. Anyway, I actually really like this shirt. I think it's probably one of my favorite designs over the last few years. That might be a controversial take, because I don't think this is going to be as universally loved a shirt as some of the previous ones, but I like it. Before I go into what I really like about the shirt, let me go over the things that I don't like about the shirt, and they're very minor. Um, the first thing is this seam here. It's got this curve to it that I'm not a huge fan of. I think it'll grow on me. From what I've seen of like pictures of the players modeling the shirt and also, you know, me trying it on myself and looking in the mirror, I think it actually looks okay. The reason I don't like it is that it sort of harkens back to the Puma days and I'm not a big fan of a kit designer reaching into the design history of their immediate predecessor. All of that's really subjective. I don't know. I sort of want the Adidas shirts to stand out on their own apart from the Puma shirts. And this to me looks like a Puma design element. That said, I think it'll grow on me. I think it'll be fine. Um, the other thing that I'm not too keen on, it's not because I think it looks bad. It's more that I know it's, uh, it's going to be the thing that we're mocked about <laughs> the club and fans by extension are mocked about is the, um, the gold trim. I honestly think it looks pretty nice, but it sort of sends the message that we thought we were going to win the league and we didn't win the league. And now we've got this gold trim and gold badge and it looks a little bit pathetic. I know that's not what the club is going for. So at the end of the day, I think I like the way it looks and I like the actual intention behind it because it's a commemoration of the 20th anniversary of the Invincible season. So if you're not familiar with Arsenal, the Premier League, English football at large, Arsenal is the only Premier League club to ever go an entire season undefeated, hence their nickname, the Invincibles. Um, that 2003-2004 season, that team, they were known as the Invincibles. So this shirt is in commemoration of that. There's only one other English football club that ever went an entire top flight season undefeated, and that was Preston North End back in 1888-1889. Yeah, no other club has done that since then, up until 2003-2004, and no club has done that in the Premier League era so far. So yeah, that's about it as far as what I don't like. Things that I do like about the shirt. Um, one that's kind of a point of controversy is... Uh, the monochrome badge. I'm a fan of the monochrome badge. Uh, this is my favorite Arsenal hoodie. It's got this monochrome badge here. I happen to like the way it looks, and I know that's a point of contention. And overall, I'm not a big fan of football club badges heading towards minimalism. But for some reason, I think it just looks really sleek on the Arsenal badge. It is what it is. It's a weird subjective take that I have, but I happen to really like it. The last time that the Arsenal badge on the home shirt 
was not the full color badge. It was actually in 2011, 2012. And I think that might have been the only time since we've had the shield badge, both this version and the previous version, that it was monochrome. All the other times has been a full color badge. So I get that that's a point of controversy for this season. Uh, another thing that I actually really like is this pattern here on the shirt. Um, it's not my favorite pattern, but I do like when Arsenal puts a pattern into their home shirt. And I think it actually looks pretty cool. The last time that Arsenal did this was in 2020, 2021. And it's this kind of chevron design with um, multiple shades of red. And this probably is, is my favorite um, pattern in a home shirt. I, I do like when Arsenal does that. I know that's also a kind of a controversial point. There are certainly a lot of fans that like the sort of traditional look of no pattern, which was um, what last season's shirt looked like. As you can see, there's no pattern. It's just a solid red. So I get it. I find that the solid red maybe isn't boring, but I like it when things get changed up a little bit. One thing I really, really like about this year, especially over last year, is the neckline. I like that we've gone with um, no collar this time. I also don't mind collars on football jerseys or football shirts, but I feel I feel like they need to be done right. And last year it wasn't done right. Here's last year's shirt. It's this big floppy collar that often you would see if you're watching a match. Like one flap would be up and one down and just like it were all over the place. And it was a little bit annoying. Even as a fan wearing it, I found like I'd be wearing it and, and like the collar would be flopping around in weird, in weird ways. And it was annoying. If you're going to put a collar on a shirt, I feel like the right way of doing it is A, to make the collar smaller and not so floppy and B, to secure the collar down. So this is the 2017, 2018 shirt that was actually done by Puma. And as you can see, it's secured and sewn down here. Now, this is a replica. I don't know if this was the case on the authentic. I assume that it was, but that's, I think, the right way of putting a collar on a football shirt. Now, I go back and forth between crew neck and V neck. In this case, I really like the crew neck style. Here is probably one of my favorite necklines on an Arsenal shirt, and this was the V neck from the 2019 2020 shirt. Another detail that I really like is the uh, dual tone uh, stripe on the sleeve. I really like when Arsenal puts a stripe at the end of the sleeve. Um, and I also like when the stripe isn't just an all the way around stripe, but when it has some kind of cool like end to it, which this one does. Kind of ends in this little curve here. That's one of the things that I found a little bit boring about last year's shirt was that the sleeve didn't have any sort of detail. Another thing I really like about this year's shirt is how the white from the sleeve kind of bleeds over into the red on the shirt body. But I realize that that can be risky because if you do it too much, it starts to look like the Ajax shirt and we don't want that. But I think this is a, a nice touch, actually. It doesn't go all the way down and then it sort of blends into this stripe here. Let's talk a little bit about authentics versus replicas. And uh, hopefully this will be sort of a helpful little talk about if you're trying to make a decision about what kind of shirt to buy, let's say you've saved up enough money to buy either style of shirt and you're not sure whether to get a replica or an authentic. I'm not one of those people that says, get an authentic every time because there are pros and cons and I'll go over some of those pros and cons here. One pro in favor of authentics is that the badge looks a lot more uniform here on Last year's shirt, you can see that the badge is actually made of like um, a polyurethane type of material that allows it to be much more uniform in its look and design. On a replica, it's stitched on. So you'll see that there's some uh, imperfections here. There's this side of the badge. This corner is a little bit bigger than that corner. Now, the imperfections um, are often very minuscule on the replica, but they are there. They're not going to be as bad as if you were to buy like a knockoff shirt from one of those 
websites that sells current football shirts for $20. Those badges, you'll see some severe imperfections. They're often not as noticeable from a distance, but once you get up close, you'll see them, and they're pretty obvious. One point in favor of replicas, however, is that they are a little bit more durable when it comes to laundering. So you can get away with a bit more. So I'll use um, these two as examples again. As you can see, the the three stripes on the replica are sewn on, whereas the three stripes on the authentic are heat pressed on. The replica will actually withstand a little bit more of a beating. You're not gonna have details peeling off if you happen to wash it incorrectly. I do recommend always following instructions, but you have a little bit more leeway with replicas than you do with authentics. And part of that as well um, includes the badge. So you'll notice that the badge on the interior, it's sewn on. So the badge is not going to fall off or peel off if you happen to wash it incorrectly. Whereas you'll notice that on the authentic, it is heat pressed on. So if you wash it incorrectly, if you put this in the dryer, you could end up having a badge that peels off. Definitely follow the care instructions. This is a delicate item, so you have to wash it on a delicate cycle and hang dry it. Don't um, throw it in the dryer. One point in favor of Authentics is that they often have much more intricate detailing um, and some of those cool features you'll find on Authentics that won't be on replicas. So here's an example. On this year's shirt, um, in addition to that sort of lightning bolt pattern, you'll also notice that there is another pattern on the fabric that kind of catches the light. If I'm not mistaken, now I don't have a replica of this year's shirt, so I, I can't compare it, but if I'm not mistaken, that doesn't actually exist on the replica, it's only on the authentic. A big point in favor of replicas, especially for particular brands, is the fit. If your club uses Puma as its kit designer, I would highly recommend not getting an authentic unless you have less than like 15% body fat because the Puma shirts are skin tight. I made that mistake once several years ago. I got a Puma authentic shirt and it really showed off all of my rolls and my fat. And even with a compression shirt underneath, it did not do me any favors. So um, the replica is the way to go in those cases. But going back to a point in favor of authentics, um, this is sort of a minor point and I don't think it should influence a purchasing decision. However, if this is kind of a thing for you, then you know it is what it is. But the authentic is the exact version that the players wear. The replica has a design that's more in line with kind of casual wear. I guess keep that in mind while making your purchasing decision, but I don't think that should really be something that influences you because at the end of the day, they look so similar from a distance that no one's really gonna know. A point in favor of replicas, it's still kind of a point against both, but replicas are a bit cheaper than authentics. Having said that, they're both very expensive, so Unfortunately, you're going to have to save up. And unlike with, let's say, hockey jerseys, for instance, football clubs keep releasing a new version of their kit every year. Whereas, you know, in hockey, the, that jersey is the jersey for the next 5, 10, 15, possibly 20 years. Clubs don't really change things up all that often. That's kind of a point against both. Um, one thing that's cool though is ArsenalDirect.com. If you're an Arsenal fan and you go to ArsenalDirect.com and you check out the retro tab, there are some really nice looking retro jerseys there that are a much more reasonable price. So if price is an issue and you are cool with wearing a retro kit from a historic season, by all means, check that section out. So real quick, I do want to talk a little bit about special edition jerseys and shirts. I'm a really big fan of when clubs and teams release special editions of their jerseys. And um, here's an example um, from the NHL. This is the Montreal Canadiens um, jersey from the 100th anniversary game. Well, the 100th anniversary of the NHL game. And there are some cool details that I really enjoy that make the make these things a little bit more collectible. One detail is the silver detailing around the crest. The other, which is specific to Montreal, is, well, 
The Habs won the most Stanley Cups. They have 24 Stanley Cup wins. And so they commemorated that on this jersey by putting all of the years that they won the Stanley Cup on each sleeve. So 24, so 12 on each sleeve. And um, I think that's a really cool feature. So similarly, this year, marking the 20th anniversary of the Invincible season, Arsenal put the record, their win and draw record, on this stripe. Um, so you can see that there. It's a really cool feature. However, it is the point of controversy um, because as of the time I'm recording this, Arsenal have actually discontinued sales because someone made a mistake <laughs> and they released this jersey with only 32 matches. Now, if you do the math, there are 20 teams in the Premier League. Every season has 38 matches. Arsenal went 38 matches in that Premier League season undefeated. They actually went 49 matches undefeated, but for that Premier League season, they went 38 matches undefeated, and there are only 32 matches on here. The club and Adidas have um, discontinued sales for this shirt, so I think they're going to fix the issue. I guess, I don't know, it, it's kind of funny. Uh, I don't mind it so much. Actually, I do mind it. What am I saying? It's going to be nagging the back of my mind. I'll still wear the shirt and I'm not going to buy a new one if they fix it, but it's such a small detail, but it'll always kind of be sitting in the back of my mind. No one's going to notice this when I'm wearing it, but it's a little annoying, but hey, that's life. For now, I want to take a quick look at the fit of this shirt, just so you're aware. I am five feet, nine inches tall. I'm about 175 pounds and my chest size is around four. 40, maybe a little smaller than 40. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put the shirt on and you can kind of get a sense for how it fits. I'm wearing a large and I think it actually fits me pretty nicely. Given my size, my body type, my frame, this is how it looks. Overall, I'm very happy with this shirt. Um, it might not be as universally loved and applauded as some of the previous shirts, um, particularly last season's and uh, the 1920 or 2019, 2020 shirt, um, but I happen to thoroughly enjoy it. I think it fits me a little bit better than last year's shirt. Um, it's not quite as boxy as, as that one was. And uh, there are certain design elements that I find uh, a little bit nicer. So overall, it's a great shirt. Very happy with it. Makes me excited for the upcoming season. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.